Next, young people learn a tray while helping neighbors in need. Then find out why this kangaroo created a social movement. And discover how keeping students together through high school built a rock solid community. That's Columbus Neighborhoods next, so stay tuned. Support for Columbus Neighborhoods is provided by... At American Electric Power, we've been proud sponsors of WOSU Public Media for many years and strong supporters of our headquarters city here in Columbus, both downtown and in neighborhoods like yours. State Auto Insurance Companies, transforming to become a digital provider of auto, home, and business insurance and for nearly 100 years, committed to the people and neighborhoods of Central Ohio. State Auto. The Columbus Foundation. Smart philanthropy for a smart city. ColumbusFoundation.org. Bailey Cavalieri. Your relationship with your law firm doesn't need to be complicated, it just needs to be right. CODA. Keeps our community moving forward. Falgren Mortine Marketing and Communications. Think wider. Ohio Health focuses on you and your family with a mission to improve the health of our communities. Women in Philanthropy at Ohio State, changing lives by giving together. And by contributions from these and other Columbus area families who support WOSU. Thank you. Today we're at the Roosevelt Coffee House in downtown. They're committed to changing the world one cup of coffee at a time. Proceeds go to fight hunger, unclean water, and human trafficking. And it's a fitting place for this episode, which is all about activism. Our first story is about Youth Build Columbus, a program for students who don't fit in the traditional high school system. They learn trades while earning their high school diploma. And as one resident of the Stambaugh Elwood neighborhood found out, students really can make big changes. Youth Build USA started in Harlem in the 70s to help inner city students who were failing and getting lost in the system. From there, they were able to create a grant through the Department of Labor, and Youth Build Columbus was one of the first grantees in the state of Ohio. We're a career tech high school. We teach construction, STNA, so it's something for kids who aren't going to college, something where they can transfer out of high school directly into a career. One of our board members lives in the area, and he somehow knew about Bill, knew that Bill was living in the backyard here, and got us all together. We got a grant from Home Depot, and we went from there. When we started on it, it was pretty much just like an abandoned house. If you look at the walls, the walls were nothing like this. The walls were probably just two roofings going up into each other like studs just going in and out of the wall. There was stuff in here that we had to break down, just, you know, breaking it down so we could build over it. When I came here, it, the siding was done, but the only thing in here was the framing and the installation. So what I began doing is Mr. King had us fix any mess ups, because keep in mind, this is our first experience with hands-on stuff. We had to level, like, how this goes. And then after that, we just scoot it in. We use a drill. This particular group, most of these students hadn't even seen, touched these tools that we used on this project. We came in, like, he stepped. He, like, showed us how to do it, walked us through it, and he let us do it. He was, like, real hands-on. Like, we, we got to build the house instead of just watching. My favorite step of the job was hanging the drywall. Um, what we mostly had to do was measurements, of course. And keep in mind, all this stuff was donated. Everything's out of square, so it took a little bit more time, but as you can see, we got it done. When I first came in here, none of this was here. We ended up laying and grouting the tile. I did the shower to me and my partner from Central. What we did here is we just put um, a little sidewalk lining down so we could get his garden right. We just brought it all the way to the back. I plant flowers all through the side. A 
we are at the end of a year and a half. It's not been smooth sailing, for sure. Um, some of the hiccups have been a change of staff at Youth Build, and some of the donations that we take in don't always fit the blueprint, so we have to start over, scratch over, do it again, work it out. I live in a neighborhood, I come by every other day, and just to watch just the transformation of, you know, the framing, the drywall, the work, and just the kids' expression as they were doing whatever. They just felt that they were contributing to help somebody. And this is just a result of that help. So that's, that's a wonderful thing. This is wonderful. The whole place. It's magnificent. It's magnificent. The cabinet. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Nice laminated floor. Yes. It look like a cherry wood. I'm going to go with Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, oh, That's very nice. Hey. And you got the microwave. Yeah. Hey. I thank you, young man. You too. I thank you. I thank you, sir. It's a pleasure, man. Anytime you can help a veteran. It's always a win-win situation. Oh, thank you, sir. Cookie hot pockets. For all your help. And you, sir. Thank you for all your help. It just gets you the flooring and the kitchen and the bathroom. It's very beautiful. I love it. I'm just overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, man. It's a beautiful place. When I first found out the story about what happened and why we was doing this, I thought, you know, it's always nice to give back to the community. So I think that was a little bit more of a motivation to like hurry up and get the job done because when I came in, I did hear that the job was like extended. I think that was a little bit more push for me to like hurry up and get it done so he could move in. I could understand what he was going through, so it's just like, for me to help and, and come and make him a house, uh, you know, it's just you don't get a better feeling for stuff like that. It feels good just knowing that what I'm doing, helping somebody else who didn't have it and needed it more than I did. The personal side of it, I don't think we could have had a better fit with Bill. He has been eager to have this happen, but at the same time has treated us all with utmost respect and is always thanking us and shaking our hand, and it's been amazing and beautiful. Wow. Mm -hmm. Next, listen to the story behind the movement that brought this kangaroo home. Then, communities that stick together start with long-lasting friendships. WOSU Public Media is in the business of reporting the news, but sometimes we get caught off guard and we make the news instead. And that's what happened to Gabe Rosenberg over in the digital media department. See, he was just trying to answer a curious C-Bus question about a kangaroo sign. And that's when things spiraled out of control. We'll let him explain how one phone call to the city sparked an entire social movement to save the Clintonville kangaroo. I'm Gabe Rosenberg. Uh, I'm the digital news editor for WOSU. And I killed the kangaroo. Not a real kangaroo, just a, a sign of a kangaroo. Let me explain. Someone asked WOSU why there is a sign with a kangaroo crossing on it in Clintonville. I asked Curious Seabus, what's up with the kangaroo sign? She'd passed it almost every day to work, but never knew why it was there. So I called the city of Columbus. The city looked into it, and then a week later, I think it was a Monday, someone came to me from across the newsroom it was like, Gabe, they took down the sign. Gabe called me. I was at work, and he said, 
I just wanted to let you know. And I had this sinking feeling like, oh no, it's what we didn't want to have happen. The sign is being taken down. And so the entire neighborhood of Clintonville was in a rage over this sign. They had no idea why it got taken down. And I immediately <laughs> logged into Facebook, logged onto social media to see what was happening. And just really felt initially like, oh no, the villagers are gonna come for me with pitchforks. So the funny thing is that in all of the hubbub around the sign's removal, I finally figured out who put it up in the first place. Yes. So about five years ago, there was construction being done down the street from my house uh, on Clinton Elementary. And after the construction was done, the construction company, the city, the school district left up the construction entrance ahead sign. And my neighbors contacted the city, contacted the school district, and no one would take the sign down. They weren't really sure what to do. And one night I was just kind of thinking about it and decided that I would put up a different sign. The reason I didn't come forward about the sign was because it was fun to have a sign that no one knew why was there. And it just became a sort of neighborhood icon. And then I came along and started asking questions and the sign went away. So things kind of snowballed from there. Save the Rue. This is where the kangaroo sign used to stand. Now kangaroo signs are popping up all around Clintonville. People start putting together petitions and organizing a movement. Each day there would be an article in the newspaper, an article online, uh, made it to NPR Morning Edition. I think if you Google Clintonville kangaroo or just hashtag save the Rue, there are at least two to three pages of Google searches dedicated to this happening. They even started a change.org petition to get the kangaroo as the official mascot of Clintonville. All the meanwhile, Jared, who put up the original sign, he called up the city and got the sign back. We had a meeting. We got together a lot of the kangaroo activists that uh, took part in helping getting the sign back and the GoFundMe and all the signs that were around town. And we also met with our CAC rep and she had been in negotiations with the principal at Clinton Elementary to get the sign put there. In honor of the fact that we are so thrilled that Clinton Elementary is the new home of the Clintonville Kangaroo sign. Why did the, the, this whole kangaroo debacle, why did it, it draw you so much? Why were you so drawn to lead this movement? Uh, I think it was just my turn. I, I see lots of things happen like this where, you know, bureaucracy runs amok or the city does something people don't like. And uh, there are plenty of times where I haven't done anything. I just thought this time I, I should have. The more you're curious, the more you're gonna know, the more people you're going to meet, and ultimately link them together. Considering everything that happened, uh, would you do it again? Absolutely, yeah. In the aftermath of all of this, the community came together in a way that none of the residents said that they'd ever seen before. That never before had people sort of rallied around something with small businesses and neighbors coming together and protesting and finding a way around and battling the small community against the government and found a peaceful, civically engaged way to resolve it. Maybe killing the kangaroo really saved it in the end, or at least I'd like to think so. Southside Stay is a grassroots program that has one simple premise. They believe that keeping students together through the years, from pre-kindergarten through high school graduation, builds strong schools and strong communities. It may sound straightforward, but believe me, it takes a whole village to keep kids together. 
Southside Stay is an initiative by a group of people that said, hey, our kids on the South End, let's keep them down here. Let's keep them in Columbus Public Schools. Let's keep them living down here and going to school here. There's a pretty strong pattern within Columbus City Schools, and this is true within most urban districts, where you see a pretty strong neighborhood enrollment. Uh, kids going to their local neighborhood school up until about fifth or sixth grade, and then it really starts to dip in middle school. There's, there's kind of a slight uptick again starting in ninth grade, but then it, it kind of starts to fall off again after that. So one thing we're really trying to address is getting folks to stay with that pathway to develop from you know pre-kindergarten all the way through graduation and high school. We want kids more involved in school than ever before. We want school to be like the source of community. And then when we know based on the data when kids continue with a cohort of kids and family members they know, they do better academically. More of those kids graduate on time. I just think those bonds ultimately make them better adults when they've formed those friendships and those relationships with their peers. The original focus for STAY was through a partnership that we created with Stewart Elementary. Stewart is kind of unique in that it's a regional alternative, but it is also now uh, partially a neighborhood school. And the relationship that STAY had with the, a, a former principal who's no longer there, we were able to work with the district and that principal to carve out space for, I believe it's over 25% of the enrollment now is neighborhood specific. So you're talking about students from Marion Village, German Village, you know, kind of right there around Schiller Park uh, who, who attend Stewart. That was kind of the initial success I think that Stay had was with, was with that particular school. And while that was great, I think that, that that vision needed to be greater, that that focus needed to be broader across the South Side. I think right now the biggest thing that Southside Stay is doing with respect to the curriculum and actually enhancing classroom learning is to, to create connections across the South Side to help support what's going on at individual neighborhood schools. And so we're looking for people who are either already engaged and excited about uh, public schools and, and just engaging with their neighborhood public school or folks who are curious about what's happening at those schools and want to learn more. So parents can get involved in the high school in, in a couple of different ways. Obviously through Columbus City Schools at, at any building they can become a mentor, a community mentor to work with a high school student on uh, soft skills, uh, job and career training, or just really to you know, hit those books and, and, and make sure that their, their academics are where they need to be. In some of the elementary schools, they have their Reading Buddies program. So you can serve as a, a reading helper, read one-on-one -on -one with a student. That's all in, you know, in, in hopes of uh, making sure that they can pass the, the third grade reading test and, and make sure that they can move on. Right now, we're doing some work with the district to try to create more opportunities for parent consultants at each school, and our hope is that we can eventually uh, help support efforts to start PTOs or parent engagement organizations of some kind. So supporting those opportunities is always a good way for, for parents to get involved. I do it because I'm involved with my children. I mean, I want to see my children succeed, and I want them to have strong relationships with their classmates and you know their teachers and their principal and everybody else that's around. Parents have got to be involved if you want to have a successful child. Probably one of the biggest challenges I would say is dissatisfaction with the school district not feeling like they're connected to the school. We have parents who talk about going into schools and you know not feeling welcome or not knowing who to go to not knowing whether there's a you know a parent consultant they can work with or there's no PTO at their school so you know a, a big part of that i think is making sure that parents feel more involved i could always be more involved we all could be more involved i think there's many parents that don't know what's out there i think it's my job to try to spread the word about southside stay if we don't talk about it, who's ever gonna know about it? I'm starting to see, because we've been in the school for now four years, the parent involvement has become a little bit stronger. 
And what I'd like to see in five to 10 years down the road is Southside Stay is having some real clear markers along the way. So when a student comes up in Columbus City Schools and they do the K through six school, that it's really clear from six to seven where you're gonna come with that South High School or another middle school that receives them. And then same thing in seven, eight to nine, that those years are segued and linked. And so we have some real clear markers, whether those be celebrations or recognition or those kinds of things. And I think Southside State can be a part of that. Me personally, I can't say that I can prove that it works other than I'm still seeing the same kids that I've seen for the last four years. They haven't gone anywhere. You know, the parents aren't pulling their kids because they're unhappy with the education that their children are being provided. I think that speaks volume. Again, I'm only here. I'm just one parent in one school. If we keep the kids enrolled here and I'm seeing them every day, I think it's working. Probably about 90% of kids still attend neighborhood public schools, whether it's the one in, in their neighborhood or otherwise. The majority of the kids in your neighborhood are, are attending a school like that, and if, if it's good for, for your student, then we need to make sure that it's good for those students as well. It's not only okay, but it's important to invest the time and to be a good neighbor in, in supporting other students beyond your own. Hi, Karen. Hello, how are you today? Good, I'm great. Uh, what have you got for us? Uh, today we have here the Columbus Illustrated Directory, um, which was a directory of prominent African Americans in Columbus around the 1920s, 1930s. Now, I know there are guidebooks for the general population, but maybe just now starting for the African American population? This was published by a Reverend Mick Williams in the community as a way to build pride during an era of segregation about different members of the community who were doing really great things. Kind of a sign too of a growing African American middle class and professional class in Columbus, right? Yeah, right before these directories were published, um, right around World War I, the African American community in Columbus really boomed as the Great Migration started coming through Ohio, and suddenly there was a large population that was segregated from the rest of the city, and they needed services just like anyone else. So they were able to build businesses and build a community, and then the middle class begins to rise. What have you found in these books that's uh, particularly interesting? Well, this is Dr. William Method, and he, along with another doctor in the community, founded the first African-American-owned hospital in Columbus, named the Alpha Hospital, and that was at Long Street and 17th. And if you go down there today, there's actually a mural of Dr. Method on the building that was once his hospital. There were also only a few um, women that appeared in the book. One woman specifically, she ran a home for girls, for young teenage girls to grow up in and to have different um, advantages that they might not have, especially during the Great Depression. And so she appears in here. And then also a couple other aid organizations um, like Dr. William J. Woodland, who was a doctor during the day, um, but he also founded a group that became the Columbus Urban League. And so they initially, during the Great Migration, would just go down to Union Station and help people find their way into the neighborhood. And then once they started helping them find housing as well, they became the Urban League. It's fascinating to look at that community from, uh, from that time, so thanks for sharing it with us. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for being with us, and remember you can catch all our episodes on ColumbusNeighborhoods.org. Plus, see our stories on the WOSU mobile app, and you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll see you back here next week on Columbus Neighborhoods. This is nice, right?
support for Columbus Neighborhoods is provided by... At American Electric Power, we've been proud sponsors of WOSU Public Media for many years and strong supporters of our headquarters city here in Columbus, both downtown and in neighborhoods like yours. State Auto Insurance Companies, transforming to become a digital provider of auto, home, and business insurance. And for nearly 100 years, committed to the people and neighborhoods of Central Ohio. State Auto. The Columbus Foundation, smart philanthropy for a smart city. ColumbusFoundation.org. Bailey Cavalieri, your relationship with your law firm doesn't need to be complicated, it just needs to be right. CODA keeps our community moving forward. Falgren Mortine Marketing and Communications, think wider. Ohio Health focuses on you and your family with a mission to improve the health of our communities. Women in Philanthropy at Ohio State, changing lives by giving together. And by contributions from these and other Columbus area families who support WOSU. Thank you.